A new area to monitor in the Atlantic as tropical chances rising through the month of August, the latest in today's video. Welcome in, folks. Great to see you on this Saturday, August 2nd, and uh, yeah, already on the second day of August. Seems like we were just on the first one, right? Uh, but definitely a couple things to talk about in today's video. A new area dubbed uh, as an area to watch or monitor here off the East Coast by the National Hurricane Center. Meanwhile, uh, some of our models still toying with the idea that, yeah, we could start to heat things back up into uh, the main development region and uh, try to bring some of that energy closer to the United States by the time that we start looking ahead towards the middle of the month. Now, if you're new to the channel, welcome. My name is Gerald. I'm a meteorologist at WCCB Charlotte. And you catch me on air on the weekends at uh, 6 and 10 p.m. And that does include tonight, at least uh, 10 o'clock tonight. Uh, no 6 o'clock show thanks to sports, but definitely tune on in. Uh, shoot me an email, say hi, or uh, follow me on social media as well. I'll always stay up to date with the latest. I'll also ask if you haven't already, like this video, subscribe and hit the bell for the latest notifications so you're always up to date with the new model data and my analysis of that data. All right, folks, let's dive on into things today and start talking weather. And uh, I can't think of a better way to do it than looking at our satellite imagery, which always a very useful tool uh, really any time of year, including this time. So we've got this big frontal system that is draped down across much of the northern United States uh, from the Great Lakes over to the northeast. Just a picture perfect to the early August day. Uh, cooler than average, drier than average. Go out there and enjoy it if you live up in those regions of the country. It's about as good as it gets here to start uh, what I would consider the time of the year that we start thinking about leaving summer behind us. We're starting to think about school starting back up. Some folks already starting school, as crazy as that is. Um, but um, yeah, definitely a, a nice start. Now, further south in the there. We've got cold air damming, a classic almost wintertime setup, but uh, we're getting it here in the summer uh, into Virginia, the Carolinas, portions of Georgia. I mean, we're stuck in the 60s and 70s for high temperatures today uh, with dreary conditions. And further south from that, uh, towards the low country of the Carolinas, southern Georgia, the Florida Panhandle, and along much of the Gulf Coast region, heavy rain, flooding, and potential tropical development as the stalled out frontal boundary leaves some spin here off the Carolina coastline over the Gulf Stream. And we'll be talking about that in in today's video. Now, outside of there, the rest of the Atlantic relatively quiet. We've got a wave here north of Puerto Rico. Uh, conditions look to be unfavorable for that system and pretty quiet across the Gulf and the Caribbean right now. Uh, really just not much ongoing outside of this current system and what's rolling off of Africa that we will also talk about here coming up in a bit that could find itself a more favorable environment. Uh, throughout the next couple of weeks. Uh, now, let's give you the latest on this area of interest dubbed by the National Hurricane Center. Uh, yeah, look at that. That's a pretty well-defined little swirl here off the Carolina coast. I'm recording this around 1.30 this afternoon, and uh, yeah, it's definitely spinning, so I think this one's got a pretty good shot of at least becoming subtropical, uh, which would still be enough to get the D name Dexter on the list. So right now, a National Hurricane Center just giving it a low 20% chance, but I'll be honest, uh, that's a healthy-looking system over very warm Atlantic waters. And speaking of those warm waters, yeah, let's take a look at some of the data and just see how warm the Atlantic is running here off the eastern seaboard. Sea surface temperature anomalies, yeah, the red, that's above average in really much of the East Coast from uh, New Hampshire all the way down to Florida, running warmer than average temperatures. Uh, that includes Bermuda, much of the Gulf, down into uh, kind of uh, portions here north of the islands. Now, where we are below average temperatures is actually out in the main development region. We've had a good amount of upwelling out here due to some uh, Hadley cell action and other uh, background environmental things that have kept things a little more tame out there with the dry air, the cooler temperatures, and uh, some enhanced wind shear. Here, but warm temperatures out near the eastern seaboard. And I'll tell you, uh, this is important for the current storm that could try to form that I just mentioned, uh, but we're going to need to watch this all year round. Uh, Eric Webb, he's a meteorologist uh, that uh, specializes in hurricanes, does a great job at kind of looking at analogs and seeing what years are similar to the current year that we're in. And a lot of analogs to this year point to other years that we've had active hurricane seasons along the eastern seaboard. That includes the mid-Atlantic and up into the northeast. So uh, we're going to need to watch this. Warmer sea surface temperatures uh, out here could definitely be something that fuels tropical development, not only now, but throughout the rest of hurricane season. And uh, I think that could be the theme of the year is more closer to home action, maybe a little bit less out here where we see that blue on the map. Uh, now, let's take a look at uh, some uh, other ingredients out there. What's going to change uh, compared to right now? Well, uh, already having a big uh, uh, pocket, excuse me, of moisture here off the Carolina coastline. And that frontal system adding spin, that's why we have that potential of something subtropical to tropical uh, trying to get going in that region over the next little bit. Meanwhile, yeah, we've got that wave north of the islands and then a new pocket of moisture 
here rolling off of Africa, but still uh, a lot of dry Sahara dust out there. So that's going to be kind of uh, one of the limiting factors. Now, as we go further ahead into time, the wave train going to really just continue to ramp up off of Africa. Pretty robust waves here uh, rolling through the ITCZ or that intertropical convergence zone where we get all these waves out of roll off of the sub-Sahara and uh, kind of, uh, again, getting into this section of the Atlantic that is known to produce storms. Now, as all this is happening and we get more of these waves to roll off of Africa, like I said, I think out towards Cabo Verde Islands, things remain unfavorable. But once they kind of get towards the islands and onward, uh, conditions going to become a little bit more ripe for tropical development. You'll see that here uh, in our wind shear map. If we take a look at what's to come here in terms of wind shear, uh, blue being below average wind shear, this is by about a week from now. Notice, yeah, we're starting to calm down towards the Caribbean and uh, really through much of the islands and just staying relatively calm in that section of the map all the way out to 10 days and then out to 15 days, the Caribbean becoming more calm. And uh, again, uh, just much of the Western Atlantic uh, seeing a lower in wind shear values as these waves roll on through. So if anything can kind of sneak here uh, into the Caribbean or out here off the East Coast where we have warmer temperatures, lowering wind shear, uh, then that's going to be something that we need to watch. And if a storm hits the Caribbean, it's almost impossible to miss land at that point. So definitely something that would need to be monitored here as we continue looking now through about the middle of the month. Those first two weeks of August that I've been talking about, uh, definitely a background environment that is becoming more favorable. All right, let's take a look now at some of the latest models themselves, and then we'll take a look at uh, the ensembles and that brand new Google AI model and see what it shows here for the next two weeks ahead. Brand new hot off the press American model run. Let's time it out for you. And we're going to start here back home again. Notice that we've got these little areas of low pressure. Here's that current system pulling off the Carolina coastline, trying to develop into Dexter. Uh, and the good news is mostly speaking, kind of pulling away. Uh, now, there have been some model runs that kind of get that to form, pull it away, and that's not a problem. But behind it, the stalled out frontal boundary stays around and almost tries to form a second storm by the middle of this coming week. And uh, that one almost gets trapped under some high pressure, kind of lingers and uh, almost kind of gets shot back towards the United States a little bit. So we'll need to watch that. Uh, but just this corridor in general for the next week looks pretty active here off the Carolina coast, uh, up through the eastern seaboard, could have some little tropical disturbances. Nothing looking to get overly strong, uh, but uh, we'll obviously definitely keep an eye on it. Now, further out into time, uh, looking out at the, the main uh, main development region, excuse me, uh, the GFS model getting some little pieces of energy, trying to get going out there, uh, but nothing really forming into anything of note here on the model through the next uh, 10 days or so, and even longer than that, uh, the GFS pretty quiet. The Canadian model, pretty similar. You can see uh, in the short range, that energy off the East Coast trying to get going into Dexter, uh, tries to form into something, uh, doesn't become a big problem. But then a secondary little piece of energy there near the Outer Banks, you can see it hard to see, but it's small. Uh, it's there, though, by the middle and end of this coming work week. Almost gets stuck there thanks to some high pressure to the north. We'll watch that. And uh, then a couple waves out in the main development region, but nothing major threatening the United States over the next 10 days. Final model I'll show you is the European model, Old Reliable. Pretty similar story here. Homegrown action here in the near term. We'll watch that. There's the first storm trying to become Dexter. And uh, then you can see as we go further out into time, the European a little more excited. Some of this African energy gets up here and forms into something. This is right around 10 days from now in the European. Uh, yeah, we've got a name storm heading generally towards Bermuda. And uh, if we go way out in La La Land, uh, forms into something. And then also something in the Caribbean out here in La La Land. So like I said, it's a pattern we need to watch towards the middle of the month. Definitely something could get going down there uh, or off the East Coast. But near term wise, I think weaker systems and then potentially something stronger out here uh, by the time we get out towards, uh, again, the second uh, week of August towards the 15th as well. All right, those are the latest global models. Let's take a look at the ensembles and the new Google AI model and see what it shows over the same time frame. Well, here it is, the new Google AI model for about eight days from now and uh, starting to pick up on that idea of the European model showing some African energy getting out here, starting to have a better chance of developing. And you notice a lot of little dots showing up here indicating, yeah, that maybe we get that next name storm. And you can see what the colors represent with uh, the key there over on the left. Now, if we go even further ahead into time, I mean, it really starts to blow up. We've got one big wave of energy. This is 10 days from now, kind of getting towards the United States. And uh, then another even wave back out into the main development region. So the Google model here, uh, again, some of that new AI technology, pretty excited that something gets going. And I'll tell you, the steering patterns suggest that whatever happens is going to have a pretty good shot at getting pretty close to land. 
Uh, now that could mean something land falling. That could mean, uh, you know, something kind of riding up the coast and all of that, assuming anything even forms. But uh, the AI model, definitely uh, pretty excited that something's going to happen here over the next two weeks. And uh, it may be onto something, as you can see here from our ensembles, at yeah, latest European ensembles, uh, pretty excited. Like I said, something's going to happen. Now we've got the near term energy here off the East Coast. Uh, most members pull that on out to sea. Uh, and then you could just see a bunch of things explode out here from about 10 days from now, anywhere from the islands up to Bermuda, some sort of energy, some sort of storm system getting into that environment with warm sea surface temperatures and relaxing wind shear uh, looking to be a possibility here again right around the middle of the month the first two weeks kind of that second week of August uh, as we've been talking about the GFS ensemble is pretty similar as well uh, a little bit further south though more of a Caribbean type event here on the GFS and not so much up to the north again outside of that near-term system and like I mentioned with the near-term system you got a couple members that get a little bit closer up to the northeast uh, maybe next week if we get that second piece of energy Energy, high pressure moving in that could kind of scoot it up closer to the United States. We'll watch that and uh, definitely keep you updated. But that's your update on the tropics uh, on this Saturday. And uh, let's go ahead now take a look back home and uh, this uh, very nice fall like day that we're seeing for many of us, but some hazards also looming. Well, don't be fooled. You might think I don't have all of the uh, watches and warnings up, but no, folks, this is all. I mean, we've got some pretty nice weather out there, at least in terms of the hazardous stuff. Although a lot of rain falling here into portions of the southeast, and that could lead to flooding as this pattern continues. So you can see a showery day here from Atlanta, Augusta, Greenville, Spartanburg, up to Charlotte, uh, really through much of uh, the Carolinas and Georgia. And then back into the Florida Panhandle and Alabama. Up north, though, like I said, the northeast, the Midwest, I mean, this is about as good as it gets to start August. Uh, we've got some air quality alerts up here, but um, all things considered, it is a nice day, especially up in the northeast. Take a trip up to the mountains or something, enjoy it, because uh, like I said, this is about as good as it gets. Now, what's to come and what's happening right now? Uh, well, we've had this trough kind of uh, work on through and a little meteorology lesson. On the back side of this trough, we've got uh, in the upper levels air that is converging and uh, that's creating sinking motion and high pressure. It's that same high pressure uh, that is kind of set up uh, shop right into this region of the country and that has led to cold air damming down the back side of the Appalachia chain and that's why we're seeing this much cooler uh, kind of atmosphere today and then that warm Gulf air trying to ride up and over it uh, is leading to the clouds and the dreary conditions and then just heavy rain for some of us as well. Now how's that going to change? Well honestly it's kind of not. We're going to get more of this, this uh, high pressure that locks into place I mean, uh, the pattern not going to budge much. I will say by the time we get to early next week, a new upper level disturbance here are going to increase rainfall chances even more, I'd say, over uh, the eastern U.S., uh, including the southeast and maybe areas further north getting back in on that rainy action as well uh, by the early and middle part of this coming work week. And that hangs around for some time here on the ensembles. And uh, I guess this is just the GFS run, but uh, good enough, right? Uh, that piece of energy kind of gets cut off from the flow a little bit, hangs around and the next seven days or so at least look to be pretty similar to what we're seeing right now and that includes uh, some of that heavy rain let's give you the latest from our high resolution rapid refresh model and kind of just fly on through this but you notice uh, by this evening, uh, yeah, that piece of energy off the Carolina coastline, that's looking pretty tropical or at least subtropical. Uh, so maybe we get that Dexter name sooner than we think. Uh, and then heavy rain continuing down into southern Georgia, the low country of South Carolina, Florida Panhandle. Uh, watch for some flooding out here. I know we don't have flood watches, but uh, just be on your A game today just in case. Same thing for the mountains of North Carolina, East Tennessee, and out through portions of Alabama. Overnight tonight, really continuing. Honestly, this is by the time we're waking up tomorrow, not as heavy rain as maybe we're going to see this evening. Uh, but enough of lingering that you still notice it here uh, on the map. And then tomorrow afternoon for your Sunday, really a repeat of today, maybe even cooler for some of us down here as that wedge really locks in and you kind of get a squeeze play. You've got uh, cold air damming here from the high pressure. You've got back in flow from the low pressure. Uh, tomorrow looks like a chilly day. If uh, you didn't get to make chili today, do it tomorrow in the Carolinas. About as good of a day in August for chili that I can think of. Uh, so definitely maybe take uh, advantage of that. But the rain continuing to start to work on in for some areas and uh, again could be heavy at times all right let's go ahead and zoom things out talk about how long this rain is going to hang around those temperature trends and then what's to come in the long range as we start to look more towards the middle of the month 
Here's the latest European model run, and we'll uh, kind of move it out in time for you. And uh, yeah, you notice heavy rain continuing to be the theme. This is by Sunday into Monday. Uh, yeah, the southeast, uh, the folks that are getting it right now, look to continue to get it all the way through the beginning part of this week. And again, another shot of uh, enforcing high pressure here going to bring more cooler air down into this region. So it's more of the same, really, folks. Like I said, uh, looks to be the case for the foreseeable future. Now, I think the further we go into time, the further north this rain is going to get so much North Carolina, Virginia going to start getting in on some of that action. Also, uh, new rounds of storms up into the northern plains here by the early and middle part of this week. Dakotas, Montana, uh, up into Minnesota, Iowa, Wisconsin. Yeah, more rounds of strong storms and heavy rain continuing into the southeast. So a pretty rainy pattern looking uh, to be on tap here for the foreseeable future. The one saving grace with that is uh, we start to keep things a little bit cooler. In fact, I don't think we'll hit 90 for a while in some of these cities into the Carolinas. You can see that here, temperature anomalies below average. And uh, it's also that point of the year that for most of us, we've already hit the peak climatologically for heat. That kind of happened about a week or two ago. Uh, Now we're going to start to go down on that roller coaster a little bit in terms of average high temperatures. Now, it's not always average. We've seen that before, so it'll still get hot again. You can see that here. Uh, by Wednesday of this coming week. Yeah, starting to warm up for a lot of us, but still cooler air lingering down into the southeast. Alabama, Georgia, Carolinas, uh, Virginia, Tennessee, is some more average to average uh, temperatures. And uh, that kind of just continues, honestly, all the way through the next seven uh, days at least. And then by 10 days from now, the latest GFS run, even trying to get another shot of cool air here into the plains. It slowly starts to ease its way eastbound. How much rain for the next seven days? Well, this is the latest from the Weather Prediction Center. A lot of it, folks, especially down southern Georgia, uh, Charleston, South Carolina area, back down into southern Alabama, Florida Panhandle. This is where we could see half a foot plus of rain. Would not surprise me uh, between now and next Saturday. Uh, And a lot of that happening really over the next five days. But uh, again, just it seems to be a pretty common theme. Now, as we go further into time, that rain line going to start to pull north up into Virginia, North Carolina more so, Tennessee, up into Kentucky as well. And then you can see some of those uh, uh, pockets of heavy storms back out into the northern plains. Northeast remaining pretty dry for the next week. Honestly, high pressure, uh, pretty nice uh, weather for this time of year looks to dominate the pattern. Further out into time, though, uh, this is the next six to 10 days. It's still pretty wet in the southeast, still pretty wet up into the northern plains. The next eight to 14 days, uh, yeah, more of the same. It looks to remain as a pretty wet pattern. So I think that keeps temperatures at least in check. I'm not seeing any record breaking heat waves. Now we'll have some days that are warmer than others, obviously. Uh, but um, yeah, not a bad pattern if you like more uh, cooler and wet weather here to start the month of August and probably through at least the middle of the month, honestly. And then whatever tropical trouble may be brewing could uh, affect that even more. So we'll see what happens. But that's all I got for y'all on this Saturday. You can catch me on air tonight at 10 p.m. if you live in the Charlotte area. And um, then uh, if you don't, you can download the WCCB Charlotte app and always watch live there as well. All right, folks, y'all have a great one. Stay safe. And I'll see you all tonight.